So we got this nice little 2D illustration. It's cool, it's static, but we are not leaving it flat. What if we gave it some depth? Maybe even a little bit of movement? You know, like those shots you see in games or fancy trailers. We're talking 3D layers, some rigging magic, a little animation and of course the cherry on top, those juicy light effects and details. Trust me, by the end you'll be wondering why you didn't do this sooner with all your illustrations. Alright? First things first, open Blender. Next, grab your illustration. We are importing it as a plane. Go to Import, Images as Planes, boom, done. Now set your camera so it fills the frame. This is your hero shot. Lock that camera down once you're happy with it. Trust me, nothing ruins your day faster than accidentally bumping the camera mid-project. Here's where things get prepped. Hop into Krita, Photoshop or your favorite 2D editor. Separate those layers. Head, body, eyes, hair tie. You get the idea. Export them as PNGs with alpha. That way we can rig and animate these bad boys separately in Blender. Back in Blender, duplicate your illustration and assign a new material of one of those layers you've made. Now the fun begins. Start modeling by cutting out your character and adding some topology on top. Here's the key. Think about how these parts will move and where you might need to add some volume. Pro tip? Add a few extra cuts near joints to prevent any texture stretching later on. Your tool for this? Good old knife. Repeat this for every layer until you've rebuilt your entire illustration in 3D. It's almost done, but you know, not moving yet. Alright, let's add some volume with a little magic trick. First, I'll place the 3D cursor right in the camera position using set cursor to active command. Then I whip out the scale tool and start moving those points. What happens? Those points are literally flying towards the camera. And the best part, when you peek through the camera view, it looks like nothing changed. Surprise! Now, if you want to spice things up, you can use proportional editing with this trick to create a smooth, gradual volume. Just a little heads up. Proportional editing might distort the image a bit, but honestly, it's not a big deal. This process can get a bit tedious, so keep your topology simple. You don't want to be wrestling with a bunch of extra points. I keep tweaking the wireframe using this method until it looks nice and decent in 3D space. And remember, repeat these steps for each layer, adding that volume and depth as you go. Now you'll see everything has a volume, while still looking like the original illustration. That's the magic of extruding those points directly towards the camera. Voila! Instant 3D goodness! It's not only one technique out there for making a volume. For example, you can use AI to generate depth. I'm using this nifty service that creates depth map or even 3D models from your images for free. Sometimes it misses the mark and you'll need to do a bit of manual cleanup, but hey, it's a solid start. A little depth from AI might just do the trick. This is exactly what I did with the background for this video. Go and check how that turned out. Here's the scoop. Upload your image, hit generate and bam, depth map in different formats. In Blender, create a plane that matches your image size, then load your depth map as a texture Add a Displace modifier, select your depth texture, don't forget to toss in some subdivisions using Multi-Res modifier, and adjust the depth in Displace modifier for the best results. Just a heads up, you might still need to do some extra tweaks or paint over it to polish things up, but it's a great starting point. And remember, you can totally mix both approaches. Combine your topology with this AI displacement for even better volume, because why not have the best of two worlds? Alright, let's dive into rigging. First up, we are creating our armature. Place down those bones and make sure they align perfectly with your model. Next, let's whip up some controls. I've decided to add controls for the wrist, fingers, hair and eyes. Because who wants to have their character looking stiff as a board? Now, for the fun part, printing those models you've created to the rig using automatic weights. Select all the meshes and the armature, making sure the armature is the active object. Hit that magic button and watch as they come together. 
Oh no, something isn't right. We need to fix those weights. Switch to pose mode. Move your armature into some wild poses and check for any trouble spots. Enter the weight paint mode. Use the draw tool to add or erase weights for a specific vertex group. Or use the clean command to wipe them out completely. When you throw the armature into extreme poses, you'll easily spot those little troublemakers. Next up, let's set up inverse kinematics. Go back into pose mode, select a bone and add IK in the bone constraints section. Select those control objects we made earlier. I made chains of two or three bones for limbs and hair, just enough to keep things flexible. For the eyes, I made them a child of the eye control object and added a limit position constraints to stop them from wandering off. We want those eyes where we can see them, right? And there you have it. Your 2.5D object is now fully rigged and ready for action. It's time to bring your character to life. Alright, let's get our animation groove on. First, we need to prep the viewport for some serious action. I like to split it into at least two sections. One for the timeline and the other for the dope sheet or graph editor. Now, select all the controls, head over to Keyin and choose Key Set, Location and Rotation and smash that Create Keyframe button. Congrats, you've just created your first frame. Next up, turn on Auto Keyin and dive into the animation fun. I like to kick things off with some hand movements, then follow up with the head tilt and support that basic movement with the animation of another hand. Then I'll add some body movement and arm movement in a pose mode. That makes it more complex and three-dimensional. Now this is where the graph editor comes into play. It's your best friend for checking how smooth your animation is. You can tweak those curves to make it look way better. Think of it as a fine-tuning your character's moves. As I wrap things up, I finally focus on the eyes. Those little guys need some love too. Oh, for the hair tie I was feeling a bit lazy, so I just used simple deform modifier to animate it swinging and stretching. Did you know you can keyframe almost everything in Blender? I keyframed the bent angle and stretch factor and added some procedural curves with curve modifiers. It's an easy trick that saves time on those little animations. And there you have it. Your character is now is fully animated. But wait, what about blinking? No one enjoys this lifeless stare, right? Shape keys for the rescue. So what exactly are shape keys? Think of them as the magical sliders that let you morph your meshes into different shapes. They are perfect for adding details like blinking, smiling or any other facial expression that makes your character feel alive. Let's create some shape keys. Start by selecting your mesh and hop into the object data properties. You'll see a little section for shape keys. Let's create one. This will be our base shape. Now let's add a new shape key for a closed eye. Click plus to create another key. With the shape key selected, go into edit mode and move the vertices to create a state for the closed eye. Now your character is so alive, they might just start pretending to be asleep during boring tutorials. Once you've got your shape keys set up, it's time to animate them. Switch back to object mode and in the shape key section find the value slider for your closed eye state. Set it to 0 for open eyes and 1 for closed. Now place a keyframe by hovering your mouse over the field and pressing the insert keyframe shortcut. The default shortcut is I key. To create some blinks, duplicate those keyframes along the timeline and adjust timing. Just like that, you've got blinking character and that brings even more life to your animation. Shape keys are your secret weapon for making your character's expressions pop, ensuring that they're anything but lifeless. Ok, ready to add some fluttering magic to your scene? Start with a simple image plane for your butterfly. Add an armature and parent the plane with automatic weights. Animate a full wing flap cycle, then hop into the graph editor to slap a cycles function on it for endless flapping. Next, create a path object for your butterfly to follow. Select your armature, add a follow path modifier, adjust the rotation and reset its location to zero. No lost butterflies here, please. Hit animate path and boom, 
your butterfly is ready to dance across the screen. Now go create a whole swarm. To add final touches, let's make your scene shine with some bloom and depth of field. Head over to your render settings and crank up the bloom effect for that magical glow. Now let's bring some light effects into play. Create a plane and use a shader editor to apply animated god rays. Just add a simple 4D Voronoi noise texture and animate the W parameter. Remember I said you can animate every parameter in Blender. And there you go, your scene is now bursting with life and energy. Grab the source file for free and check it yourself. Check the link in the description below. If you got something out of this, hit that like button. Helps more people find the video and it means a lot for me. Wanna take this even further? Check out my other video where I use Blender's grease pencil to mix hand-drawn animation with 3D geometry. It's like stepping into the whole new level of 2D and 3D fusion. Click over to that next video and keep learning, you'll love it. See you there! Still here. Subscribe.